Good evening. This is Annabelle Kay from Coffee Clutch. Thank you for joining me. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is an affiliate scheme. Affiliate scheme is basically a way where you hook up the referrals that people make for your product or services online with your shop with your shopping cart so that they automatically get commission on those sales if the person they send to your website goes through the shopping cart and completes the transaction. It's quite distinct from a referral scheme which doesn't need to run through an online shopping cart and we will be talking about that later on in the series but at the moment we're focused on affiliate schemes and they all have certain things in common whatever software you use the first one is that the affiliate has to generate a link or a coupon and that that has to track which customers go to the shopping cart from which source so by their very nature affiliate schemes require data sharing there's absolutely no way to run a secret affiliate scheme where the affiliate has no idea what's going on. You don't know which customers came from where. And so you have to get your data sharing in line with GDPR. So let's talk about roles. When we talk about the general data protection regulations and data protection in general, we talk about roles. So as somebody who signs up to stuff online, who joins mailing lists, I am a data subject. As someone running my own business, I am a data controller. And the reason why I'm a controller is I get to decide who uh, we collect data about or who we ask for data, how we structure it and where we keep it. So I might be incompetent or competent, but I'm still the controller. It's my job to decide. Just as in my business, I set prices, I set marketing. I don't have to tell you, Jacqueline and the other visitors, that being the boss involves a lot of responsibility. And one of them in a micro enterprise is being the data controller. Now, in between those two roles is someone called the data processor. So if you use MailChimp, for example, to send out your mailing list, data, MailChimp is acting as your data processor because they are collecting the data you ask people to give when they sign up to the mailing list. And it's your mailing list, even though the MailChimp are processing the data for you. So when it comes to an affiliate scheme, the roles are quite specific and you can never really understand what's going on with your affiliate scheme if you don't get this bit straight. You're still the data controller in your business. The data processor in an affiliate scheme is the affiliate and indeed the platform you use to run your affiliate scheme on. So if you're already running an affiliate scheme, please let me know in the chat room what platform you are using. I currently use WP Affiliate and I'm also looking at Thrive Affiliate Scheme, but I know that there are literally hundreds of them. And of course, the data subject in this context would be the customers. We're not talking tonight about the affiliate as the data subject, which of course they are when they sign up to your scheme, just as anyone else's uh, data subject at that point. So at the very least, there are three roles involved here and you have to get them straight in order to make your affiliate scheme work. Most of us have taken on board by now that part of GDPR security is that you have to contract for GDPR security and you have to have written data processing instructions so that the people who handle data on your behalf know what they're doing. When you're choosing an affiliate scheme, you're obviously going to be looking at where and how the affiliate scheme itself processes data. Now, the majority of schemes I've come across sit primarily on your site. So if your site is HTTPS and if you are hosting your site um, in Europe or the UK, if you are UK or EU based, you have gone a long way to sorting this out. 
you obviously need to understand from the people who run the affiliate scheme what security measures they've got in place to secure that data. To a degree, you can't specify it to them. They do what they do the way they do it. And the only decision you can make is, is this adequate for me? So you will be looking at some form of data encryption, some kind of double authentication login for you so that it's not easy to hack. And generally speaking, while you can access your affiliate scheme normally from within your shopping cart site, you normally have a separate login and you need to take care that you secure those logins appropriately and watch it when you're working with techies because they always want you to share yours and generally speaking if you need to share logins you need to contract your techies for security and to create other ones and we'll be talking about that a lot in the autumn as we go through contracting for gdpr with the various roles you pay but what about your affiliates well, you, you need to have a written affiliate agreement, which deals with what they can do with information. Why is that? Well, it's the very essence of any affiliate scheme that the affiliate can log in and go, there have been X sales on my account. And the vast majority of affiliate schemes will let the affiliate know it was Fred Blogs that made that purchase and they spent £55 with us. Therefore, your commission is whatever it is. So whilst affiliate schemes don't generally share high level data, and they certainly don't usually show anything about the credit cards or the way this stuff was paid, by their very nature, at the very least, they share the name of the person who made that purchase. So if you're running an affiliate scheme, I would invite you to go check with your affiliates, a scheme provider, what information are they collecting? What information are they sharing with the affiliate? Because it's not always easy to tell. You can always create yourself as a dummy affiliate and have a look at it and sort it out that way. And are they storing it separately in their site or are they simply passing it through to you? Now, this has been a problem with things like uh, website forms because you tend to think because you fit in a website form online, it goes straight from your website to you. But many website forms keep that data in their intermediate portal, partly so that they can roll back transactions if something failed. And many of them make it very hard to delete that data. And there's no functional way to do it. And that's why you've seen an awful lot of updates and upgrades around GDPR to all the main website form platforms. So if you're picking an affiliate platform and you don't have one now, find out when it was last updated, because if they've done nothing at all in the way of updates in the last two years, it's not likely to be GDPR compliant. And there are some old ones that are no longer being maintained. That may not be the right choice for you if you're setting up now. So you're going to need um, the equivalent agreement with your affiliate. And that's going to be an affiliate agreement. So you also need a data privacy policy because you're saying to the affiliate, you're going to access this information in accordance with our affiliate scheme rules and in accordance with our data privacy policy. Your affiliate may well need one of their own in terms of running their own business, but when they're acting as your affiliate, they're doing this for you. So you should be able to provide one for them. If you're already in our GDPR groups, you should have access to the one that's included for free in your group membership. If not, please let me know in the chat room and I'll get you a link to how to join or how to get your, GD, um, your data privacy policy separately. So is everybody clear so far on where we are in relation to roles and what paperwork is needed as a kind of top line thing? So here we are thinking about our, GD, our GDPR ready scheme. We have got to have affiliate scheme rules. Now, the first thing I want you to think about in terms of your affiliate scheme rules is what is the purpose of your affiliate having access to any data whatsoever about what people 
have bought from you. Now, if you haven't got a scheme already, I want you to imagine it, but I can tell you that from the point of view of the affiliates, the purpose is so that they can actually make sure that everything is running smoothly and it's actually working. The problem is that obviously once you've got access to that data, you need to um, make sure that they're only using it for that purpose. So the uh, the big secret to all of this is to set up your rules about what they can do. And then when you've got your data processing instructions saying you can access the data to check your commission, etc., you pass it down the line in writing. Why is this? Well, the first reason is that GDPR asks you to tell people what they may or may not do with the data rather than just assume they've got some common sense. Now, sometimes that can be a bit insulting if you're dealing with an experienced affiliate, someone who makes a lot of money from promoting other people's uh, product. But we certainly have in the Coffee Clutch group a significant number of affiliates who have never been an affiliate to anyone else before. They are not professional affiliates, and it's simply not reasonable to assume that they know how the game works and what needs to be done. So it's much better to give people some instructions and go only access this information to check your commission and only come back to me and no one else if you've got any questions about it. So I hope that makes uh, sense for you. Now, it's really important when you've got affiliates that your affiliate rules, by the way, should require your affiliates to disclose their affiliation with you. What do I mean by that? So let's suppose that I am a, a Jackie's, Jacqueline's affiliate. I'm sure I could be one day. She does great stuff. Um, so I go around saying Jacqueline's stuff is the best thing since sliced bread. Here is a link. You can buy it. That's how affiliate schemes work at the end of the day. I need to disclose that I am acting as an affiliate. If you're in the UK, this is a requirement under the Advertising Standards Authority rules and you, you need, if you are an affiliate to anyone, to make it clear. You can do this with hashtags if you're sharing in social media. Um, there are a couple of hashtags that people use, one of which is hashtag F. You can also, if you're putting stuff in your newsletter or your website, you can say things like, I get a cup of coffee if you buy. Um, anything you like to disclose the financial connection between you as an affiliate and the person you're affiliating for. Now, if you're setting up an affiliate scheme, and all that's nothing to do with GDPR, it's a very good idea to have in your rules, you must do this, because that way, if your affiliates are all over the place promoting your stuff and not disclosing uh, their connection with you, you've told them, and it really isn't your fault if they're not following the contract you've given them. Another thing that's really important, part of GDPR, um, although it's older than GDPR, is cookie statements. We've all been knee deep, haven't we, um, in, yes, I'm happy about cookie clicks for the last couple of months. Is there anybody here who's not heartily sick of them? But the way uh, affiliate schemes work is when someone clicks the affiliate link, it puts the cookie in their browser. And when they go to the car, it goes, aha, Annabelle sent me this sale. I'll give the commission to Annabelle. So predominantly, affiliate schemes work through cookies. And this means if you are someone's affiliate, you need to put on your website in your cookie policy, we are affiliates for X, Y, and Z. If you click our affiliate links, it will track you to the shopping cart should you choose to buy. So I can get my cup of coffee from Coffee Clatch or my commission or however you want to put it. If you are running an affiliate scheme, if you are taking on affiliates, you need to require them to do that because otherwise we're all having a bit of a sneaky arrangement that the customers don't know about. And the whole point of GDPR is not to stop you doing stuff, but to make it transparent. Is everybody with me so far? You are the data controller. It's up to you to set the standards and the contracts that your affiliates live by. 
the affiliate is the data processor and they should in an ideal world be doing what you tell them to do in the way you tell them to do it it's not always like that i can tell you you've got a number of affiliates and with the best thing in the world they don't all read everything they don't all do everything that you think they should do and you do have to train them and uh keep in contact with them you can't just send them a contract and go that's it but the data subject in this context is the end customer when the end customer needs to know if they click on Annabelle's affiliate link that they will be tracked to Jacqueline or Marsha's site when they get to the cart so that Annabelle can have a commission. There's nothing shonky about it. There's nothing wrong about it in GDPR terms. The only wrong thing about it would be if it's a secret and it's not disclosed. And is everybody clear about the affiliate needs something in their cookie statement? But of course, you do as well, because the cookies are on your site too. Now, some people ask me, what happens if people block cookies? Because you know that people can block all cookies or, or some cookies. Affiliate schemes rely on cookies. So the biggest hazard of affiliate schemes, and it does happen, is if people turn off their cookies and block them all, the customer may make the purchase, but the affiliate will never get the commission. It is rare. We get about 1% of our affiliates when that happens, when they go, I can't believe it, so-and-so bought the product, but I didn't get the uh, commission. The number one reason for that is the cookies were blocked. So it does happen and therefore in your affiliate scheme you really need to say it's all about the cookies. If the affiliates are blocked we can't hand allocate because you can't begin to imagine what a nightmare it is uh, uh, giving people 25p for this and 50p for this by hand when actually you've got no way of doing this. So your affiliate scheme rules should deal with that. The other thing that your affiliate scheme rules will need to deal with is what happens if a customer comes via two affiliates. So I'm an affiliate for you and let's say Marsha is and they come to my site, click my link, mean to buy but don't get it together, go to Marsha's affiliate link, click that link and then buy Jacqueline's product. Who gets the commission? So what do you think would be fair in those circumstances? Should it be Annabelle who started the sale or Marsha who actually closed it? Bear in mind, I've not yet come across an affiliate scheme where you can apportion it or share it. So what do you think? Who thinks it should be Annabelle who started it? And who thinks it should be Marsha who brought the sale home? Well, whatever you think and whatever your preference is, your affiliate scheme rules need to deal with that. Now, some affiliate scheme rules say, um, yep, Annabelle started it, she should get the commission. Thank you very much. Some affiliate scheme rules say, uh, Marsha finished it, she should get the commission. Now, in most affiliate schemes, you get to choose. There's a button where you go, we do it this way or we do it that way. But it does it that way for all sales. You can't have one version for Annabelle and another for Marsha. Whatever it is, you need to say so in your affiliate scheme so that when people go into their affiliate scheme and go, well, why didn't I get so-and-so? And then you discover so-and-so. But you can say that's because you weren't the first person who sent them to us or you weren't the last person who sent them to us, depending on... Uh, which way round you've you've set your scheme rules. I've not come across any other combinations and I'd be very most interested to know if anyone's got a scheme that arbitrates between that. In reality, they're quite simple bits of kit. They simply put a code through that link into someone's browser that tracks into the shopping cart. There are limited opportunities uh, most of the time to do anything more complicated than that. So, what does the affiliate do with this information in the scheme? Well, they they log in, though not all of mine do. Um, I send a commission, and if they've got any issues about, oh, that's higher than I thought it would be, or that's lower than it thought I thought it should be, the first thing they do is they go into the scheme and they look at what commission has been assigned to their account. And all the schemes I've come across assign that commission by the name of the customer. So they are getting a certain amount of personal data. Now, the why is obvious that everyone wants to make sure that everyone's paid the right amount. 
But in GDPR terms, the why is not why you're doing it. It is what is your lawful basis for processing. Now, if you've been with me through the GDPR journey, and for some of us, it's been 16 months now. It's, it's not been a short journey. And for some of you, this is the first time well, we've been together online. You will know that, that there are lawful basis for data processing. And in a nutshell, you either have to have a legal obligation to do it. And that's not so. For example, you have to properly account for your commissions when you pay them out so that everybody pays the tax. But you don't have to, from a legal obligation point of view, tell the affiliate which particular sale it was on. Now that you need to do because you are contracting with your affiliate to pay them so much a referral. So your legal basis for processing this information and sharing it with the affiliate is it's necessary to bring the affiliate agreement, which is a contract, into play. So what else is necessary is for your customers to know that you run an affiliate scheme. And as part of that, affiliates will know if they've come by an affiliate that they personally have made a purchase to the value of X. Most affiliate schemes don't disclose completely to the affiliate exactly what's being bought. You'll have to get down inside yours and see what it does. But the customer needs to know. That way, everybody knows what's going on and why. There's nothing secret going on. How do you feel about that? Would you feel comfortable saying in your data privacy policy and your cookie policy, this is what's going on? So I think there's been a historic dark side to affiliate schemes where people haven't known. Um, and so you think that your friend is recommending something to you because it's the best thing ever. But in fact, your friend is making 10 quid out of that referral. Nothing wrong with that as long as you know. But it's it's just like professional advisors, you know, now have to disclose financial advisors if they get a commission so that you can figure out um, are they giving me the best advice or are they making an earner? Where are affiliate disclosed links, by the way, it doesn't seem to upset people. They're quite happy to know. And, our, you know, no one's ever become a millionaire becoming a coffee clutch affiliate. Trust me, I don't think people recommend a product because they're going to get rich. I think they do it because they like the product. But maybe that's just what I think. So to sum up, you need affiliate scheme rules. Most online affiliate schemes have got a place where you slot in the rules. And you need them. And by the way, these aren't the only reasons you need them. If you're going to keep order with your affiliates, you need to go, this is the deal, this is the percentage, this is how it works. The rules need to require the affiliate to put the right things in their cookie statement. And you also need to put the right things in your cookie statement. That way, if you pick a platform that is suitably secure and you disclose what's going on to your customers, you have a GDPR ready affiliate scheme compared to what has often been the case, which is people just hook up an affiliate scheme, grab some random rules off the Internet, by the way, which don't deal with GDPR. And I've seen a lot of those, and there's no reason why they should. They originate in America, they originate in Australia, they may be two to five years old, and there's absolutely no reason why those rules should ever mention them. But if you are in the UK or the EU, or if you are collecting customers who are in the EU, you need to get a GDPR compliance scheme. Now, it's not that difficult complying. So for those of you in the USA, and I know feelings can run very strongly there, it's probably easier to put in the scheme rules that are GDPR compliant rather than try and have a geolocatory affiliate scheme. Because first of all, your affiliates could be anywhere in the world, but the customers they're referring could be anywhere in the world, unless you're a total geo blocker, in which case you wouldn't be on this webinar in the first place, the easiest way to comply is to have a simple set of rules. So I'm hoping that that actually works for you. So your data privacy policy is included in the GDPR group that you're a member of. And I think everyone here tonight is there. If you haven't downloaded it already, have a look. 
there are spaces you can fit in you got the standard one with your membership if you need to upgrade it to something a lot more complicated you can do that um, they are also and these are not included in the data privacy um, policy or the gdpr group we have a set of affiliate scheme rules for you as ever the basics are branded our way the standards you can put your logo on and the premiums you can edit if you need a set of rules to get you started that are designed to go with our data privacy policy and everything else we're doing with you please check out the coffeeclatch.co.uk forward slash afro affiliate link and if you're here and you are not in our gdpr groups go over and have a look at coffeeclatch.co.uk forward slash gdpr and see what we've got for you